Welcome everybody. It's me Shane and I'm here to give you a review of Dragon Ball Super Superhero. So first, before anything, my scanner just told me you're going to go ahead and like this video here. You're going to leave a comment at the bottom let me know what you thought of the movie or what you thought of my review. And you're going to subscribe. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified of more videos just like this. So let me take this off because I really, really prefer my glasses. Wow. If those of you who are coming from my Instagram account, you already know I saw this movie several hours ago. And on top of that, yeah, this is kind of late coming out, but please forgive me. Just wow. I, first of all, I'm not even going to pretend like I have not been spoiled about what, you know, the forms that have appeared in this movie, because as soon as this movie came out in Japan, people were so, mm, uh, ooh, ooh, here's my tea, they're so mm, thirsty, so thirsty to just show, oh, here's this form, here's that form, here's this. And the cool part is, I basically didn't get spoiled with any plot because people love to show things. Especially a certain bout between Goku and Vegeta, but we are definitely going to talk about that one later. I got some stuff written here. I'm probably going to miss some stuff, but I heavily enjoyed this movie. Now, let's first of all, before I talk about plot, I, I, I want to talk about superficial stuff first, but we'll go with the plot first. So the plot is as such, and I, lo I love how they did this. By the way, I watched, some, I watched the dub. I was not going to wait several hours later to watch the sub, even though that's what I prefer. I watched the dub, and I'm going to skip around. The voice acting for this, the voice acting was phenomenal. Like, whoever did the uh, the localization for the translation, whoever did all of that, nothing felt dumb, nothing felt out of place. This is the type of stuff I want for, like, current dubbing for anime. I get that some things may get lost in translation from, you know, English culture to Japanese culture and all the other cultures of the world. But at least speaking from English Western Westerner, this is great. This was nice. There was and even the callbacks like uh, Piccolo not being able to fly a plane well because he didn't get his license. Mwah, love that. But the VA was great. Uh, music. It was average because unlike, you know, the Super Broly movie, there wasn't a headlining song. There wasn't Blizzard. There wasn't the chanting Go Broly, Gogeta song. Nothing like that. But the music was good. Maybe I'm trying to find the soundtrack. Maybe once I look a little further, I will be able to find it. But <clears throat> the look of this movie is cell shaded. It's just funny that I said cell shaded. Um, this cell shading is not just, it's, you see stuff like this even in, um, Demon Slayer, where sometimes it's 2D, but then you can just tell from how the characters are moving and how they, how they look. It's, and it, actually, the funny part is, it doesn't ever feel out of place for me. It's just, I'm kind of watching this movie, and I'm like, yeah, this doesn't feel uncanny valley. Uh, one super nerd that works at a theater did point out, like, an animation mistake, where, Krillin had his helmet on, but it was off. By, by the mind, if you haven't figured this out already, there will be spoilers for this. There will be slight spoilers for Chapter 87 of the Super Manga that just happened, because now they're about to go on hiatus. So if you haven't read it yet, don't worry. I'm not going to tell you to go back. No, you stay right here. When I get ready to talk about spoilers from that, I'm going to hold up two fingers here. And then when these two fingers come here and go away, that means you can just, just mute me. When you see this, unmute when you see me do that. So, as I'm about to say. So the plot of this movie, and they did this so beautifully. And I saw this art, the, I saw this art a while ago. And I wish the super anime had the the movie art. The guy that drew the uh, Broly movie did a great job. The person who did the flashbacks. Showing Goku fighting the Red Ribbon Army. And I love that the, the announcer, probably, Kyle, I think it might have been Kyle Hubert, the voice of Gohan. Which, if you guys didn't figure out, this 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 my Gohan stuff. I might as well bring it down. 
we got the three forms of the goat. We have the son, the father, and the literal Holy Spirit of all of this. We had to show that stuff off. Anyway, we had the announcer, or the narrator, and it's so beautifully done, said, for those of you who are too young to remember Goku's earlier journeys, he fought the Red Ribbon Army who wanted to take over the world via androids. You remember Mr. Black, Commander Red. Commander Red had a son, and his son's name is Magenta. So I'm going to assume that, you know, maybe Commander Red had Lady... I don't know what makes Magenta. Lady Sapphire, maybe? And his son wants to slowly build, build everything up. Now, the craziness is we go from Goku as a child to the future with this great android saga. And the person who survived Goku's whole onslaught on the Red Ribbon Army was Dr. Jiro. Dr. Jiro wanted to get back at Goku, wanted to still rule everything, turn his own self into an android, and uh, still fail to... He got killed by 17. And here's the funny part. Everyone on this shirt, Goku's at the very bottom, everybody on this shirt shows up in this movie. I crap you not. I shit you not. So, they go through all of that, and then they explain uh, Gohan, take, you know, they they all came together, and they took out the ultimate android that he created, Cell. But Dr. Jiro, Dr. Jiro has a grandson. So, let's do a little black background check here. Dr. Jiro, his wife, Android 21, her real name is Vomi. Their son based on, and who uh, Android 16 is based on, his name is Givo. Now, apparently, Givo was super aggressive, so when Dr. Jiro made the android because he missed his kid, made sure he wasn't aggressive at all. I found that very, this is, I did some research before I came to y'all, because there I had some questions. Now, apparently, his grandson, Dr. Hito, Dr. Hito is not Gevo's kid. Obviously, they had Obviously, Jiro and Vomi had other children, and he got married and had Hito. Now, those two, his parents died tragically, but Hito loves heroes. As a matter of fact, Gamma 1 is based off of a hero that he's seen. Cell Max, who's in this movie, you see the way there's a hero that looks like Cell, the big-lipped Cell. I have another name for him, but I'm not going to say it here. Big-lipped, second-form Cell, and dude loves heroes. Well, he's also a bit of an a-hole. He's, dude is fat, pudgy, super short, shorter than Krillin, and he's 24, has a PhD and a doctorate. He was in jail, the man named Carmine, working for Magenta. By the way, Magenta is also tiny, just like his father, Commander Red. They scoping him out. Hito is super smart because he's had this piece turn things into Android. He took over the mind of a bee. And make this be super strong. That he can kill anyone with that stinger. Even android people who have human parts. Pardon me. He also. He also. Modified his own body. So that even if he got shot. Which was a funny thing. Dude pointed the gun. I was like, even if you shoot me. I've, I've injected myself with something. That my skin can take a lot of. A lot of punishment. One of the things that I do did my questioning is that when Hito left the prison, he had all of his items, so he was able to follow them and know what they wanted. But the thing with Hito is his whole thing is he loves heroes. He's like everything I've heard about the Red Ribbon Army, which they have a they pull an umbrella corporation. They have the Red Pharmaceutical Corporation, which is a front for the Red Ribbon Army, which I guess people just forgot about the Red Ribbon Army. I digress. Um, he said, you guys sound more like villains, and I like heroes. He, the suit he wears is based off of a hero whose autograph we see him get, you know, I, I don't know if it's in the, in the intro, I think it might be in the intro, going into the intro, right? <clears throat> and Magenta spins this whole thing so that it looks like Capsule Corp is evil. Like, they've been seeing a lot of people fly in and out of that place. You know, how else could... They're aliens. How else could they have gotten all this technology so fast? He's actively feeding BS to the kid to make him think that 
Capsule Corp is evil and wants to take over the world, but we're here. We just want to stop him, right? You know, you deal with androids. See, this kid went to jail because he took stole three bodies from the morgue, turned them into androids, and made them work at a convenience store, which is all right. Anyway, so he tricks him, and you know how he does it? He shows him footage of future trunks versus Frieza, and he's like, well, "What's going on here?" He's like. Well, obviously they're fighting two aliens over who's going to get the planet. And it's just like, wow, I can't even believe. You're supposed to be smart, but you're really dumb. But he already, in the end of the movie, he even said, I knew that they were bad. It's just I, I wanted the money to do my funding. This dude, this kid, is this guy, kid, he's kid, he's 24, I'm older than him. This kid is fat because he all he does is drink milk and eat all these Oreo cookies. They're literally Oreos. While Commander, while Commander Magenta chain smokes cigars, like he'll puff a little bit and then put it out. I found those those tiny idiosyncrasies in their characters to be uh, interesting. But yeah, here we are. And then six months later, our story begins. Now, I'm not going bit by bit, and it's actually pretty funny. I remembered all this in my head. Um, what? Let's talk about some of the best parts. The best parts are the fights. And this, I'm going to say right now. Out of all of Dragon Ball period, I don't care if it's Ball, Z, uh, Kai's technically Ball, we're not going to count that, but Ball, Z, GT, and Super, the best arc there's ever been is the Android slash Cell Saga, period. Just period outright. Because not only do they have multiple fights in that arc, even if the fights don't finish you know, with someone dying or someone being beaten flat out, they lead into satisfying conclusions that lead you to the next setup. Same thing in this movie. When Gamma 2 shows up to fight Piccolo, he's like, first I was just here to analyze you, but Piccolo's smart. Piccolo's like, okay, I see the red ribbon thing on your shoulder. You're part of Red Ribbon Army. They're calling, and one of the things I, I wrote down here, the callbacks. People are calling, Dende calls Piccolo Kami. He's like, I'm not Kami. And Gamma 2 calls Piccolo uh, Demon King Piccolo. He's like, I'm not that guy anymore. And he's like, I'm not even going to take time to explain it. Which is, there's so much in jokes that if you're a fan of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, you are going to instantly spot them when you hear them. He's like, I'm not going to explain that. This is pretty, it's pretty complicated to explain. I shot him an egg. Technically, I'm his son, but technically, I am him. Love it. The fight there was great because Piccolo threw off his weighted clothing and was still like, ah, I can't beat this guy, but was able to trick him to think that he gotten beaten. The effects for that was amazing. The fight between the fight between Gamma One and Gohan, fantastic. Especially with Piccolo, and here's one is one of the themes, and I will get to it when I go character by character. But Piccolo addressing that Gohan you you haven't trained and the reason why he addresses this is because earlier on Pan trains with him every day before she goes to preschool Pan is three now uh, she hasn't learned how to fly yet but she's learning the basics and Videl calls Piccolo they got Piccolo a cat phone he has all these plushies dude has a throne in his home mind you pretty I like that I like that but calls him on the phone does a video chat says can you pick up Pan Gohan has this big thing coming up, and it is confirmed through the, uh, was it, the intel of the Red Ribbon Army. Gohan's a biologist, and his field of study is insects. Apparently, there's an insect that actually goes Super Saiyan in that world, but it's quite fascinating. Quite fascinating that that is the route he took, given that he's had to fight a giant bug. I digress. Um... Piccolo's whole deal is they want to kidnap Pan. So Piccolo kind of sneak he snuck his way into the Red Ribbon Army's base and used himself to go and get Pan. Pan is so well taught, so well trained. She can sense Piccolo's energy and his aura without really needing to see his face. Like, yeah, I knew it was you. By the way, Pan's teacher, black lady named Janet, already knows Piccolo because he's done this more than once. And Piccolo did early on chastise Gohan, like I said, about not training because why aren't you getting your own kid? Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm trying to do this thing here. It's 
Gohan is slowly becoming his father without realizing it. But even when Piccolo, Piccolo does a fake, does a test punch and he catches it, but he still gets hit in the stomach. Puts on his weighted clothing and again, it's a callback. He's like, yeah, when you were a kid, this clothing was nothing. Great. So the fight between Gohan and Gamma 1, Piccolo is like, once he finds out his daughter's taken, he's going to flip his shit, right? And he does. He snaps into Super Saiyan 1, threatens the guy who comes along with disguised Piccolo, and Gohan doesn't know it's him. It's just, why Gohan? Anyway, goes off to get his daughter. Super Saiyan 1 doesn't cut it. When Piccolo and Pan fake like he's choking her, but he's holding her up by her feet. Gohan snaps, this is the screen right there too, but you can't see it, into his, uh, we call it Ultimate Gohan, the potential fully unleashed, to which these Gamma guys are pretty strong. Piccolo says they are about as strong as Vegeta and Goku, at least in base form, but they might actually be stronger because they're able to handle, Gamma One's able to, he's overwhelmed by Ultimate Gohan, but, you know, it's it's a really good fight. He's only, his energy was at 82%. Which Gohan's like, dang. Uh, the other fight, second round between Piccolo versus Gamma 2. Piccolo gets two power-ups. I love that nerds don't pay attention to things. Piccolo, throughout of the uh, promotional art, we saw Piccolo having a lighter skin tone. And everybody was making jokes. A lighter skin tone is because he had his potential unlocked, much like Krillin and Gohan had. Back on Namek. This movie was actually originally supposed to be all about Piccolo, and you can tell. But people convinced Toriyama to say, hey, gotta put some Gohan in here because they go hand in hand. Tea break. And no, you don't get to see the tea break. Anyway, <laughs> his potential gets unlocked, and his skin his skin goes from a darker, darker green to a lighter green. It's very obvious. Even Shinron... He has to get Shinron to do it and brings down a mirror so he can see it. I love that, again, they address so many things. How was Shinron able to do that? Well, when Piccolo found out that Dende can't do the same thing that Guru did, even though he's the same type of Namekian, because you have to be a certain age to be able to do that, Dende upgraded the dragon again to be able to do it which is how he upgraded it to do three wishes instead of one. Some type of special miracle water. Even Kami slash Piccolo didn't know you could do that. And he says, well, you know, you kind of just landed on Earth, so you really didn't remember all the stuff you could do. Pardon me. The dragon does it. He's a lot. And the dragon gave him a little something extra. Piccolo's other form is called Orange Piccolo. Now, on his back is this. This symbol here. That symbol is actually the symbol of the pride of the Namekian race. The circle represents Shinron, and the raised orb is actually the trees that they grow called the Araja, which are basically hydrania's in English. That's what the, the, the Japanese name translates to the English name hydrania when you talk about the port, the port Manitou that it comes from. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. I did stupid research for this. Um, Orange Piccolo and Piccolo, Piccolo's first upgraded form when he does a apparently special beam cannon has a shorter version called special special beam uh, I think special beam blast which is what he does to Gamma 2 who deflects it Piccolo's about to get beat but then he turns into Orange Piccolo and Gamma's attacks does nothing he backfists him punches him knocks him out Toriyama has said that this form is on par with Goku and Vegeta at their highest. So, Piccolo and Gohan are now at this max form. I love that. The second fight and the best, biggest spectacle. Because throughout this entire movie, you have Pan saying, I heard that, you know, Papa, her father, Gohan, has the potential to be stronger than her grandfather. And I like that Piccolo has to take him in. He's like, oh, Goku, right. Well, he could, but, eh, you know, he kind of fell off. He, was, he openly says he fell off. And this whole entire thing going along with this was to help push Gohan, which it did. Because now we have Cell Max, which has been activated prematurely. 
Dr. Hito was not trusting this at all and actually put in a little safety measure where if you hit him in the head, it'll make him explode, but it'll shut him down. Cell Max is awakened early by Evil Magenta once they realize the Gammas aren't going to beat Ultimate Gohan and Orange Piccolo, which Piccolo names himself Orange Piccolo because he's not all that flashy. <laughs> Cell Max comes. Now, Boma does show up because they couldn't get in contact with Goku and Vegeta. We will talk about them later. I promise we will. We had to get 18, Goten, Trunks, and Krillin. Initially, Krillin was being all like, I can't do it. But he does jump in when he sees everyone attacking at once. And he saves his wife. So, put some respect on his name, Boma. I digress. Cell Max is basically second form Cell, but giant. He doesn't regen. They were having issues with, you know, getting him to be as strong as how Dr. Jiro made him. That's why Magenta brought Hedo in. But Hedo purposely didn't make this dude like the best of the best. He's super strong. He's stronger than how he ever how he ever been. But at the moment, he's mindless. So he's not calm or suave like the original Cell at all. So during this big battle, everyone's been knocked out. Unfortunately, the boys, they their fusion was a dud. They got fat, uh, fat Gotenks. But with 18 and Gamma 1 kicking him, he did do a headbutt that cracked him. We get Gohan needing to unleash his full power. And this very much mirrors two moments. It mirrors Goku and Piccolo versus Raditz. And it mirrors... Uh, Goku telling Gohan he could beat Cell. Because Piccolo, even though he's in his giant form in orange, it's like, this giant form is just a bluff. It's not a power increase. You're going to have to power up strong and do a Kamehameha or something and hit him in the head so we can beat him. Because Gamma 2 sacrificed himself trying to kill him, and all he did was just break the guy's arm off. After everyone's down and, and Gohan thinks that Piccolo has died to uh sell max who seems like a bit of a callback to shin godzilla because his tail does a giga beams his body does giga beams looks like godzilla to me by the way gamma 2 reminds me of ultraman but gamma 1 reminds me not just of the hero from earlier but reminds me of cyborg 009 if you have not watched that anime any version of that anime do yourself a favor and watch that also about cyborgs as androids. But when he thinks that Piccolo dies, we get a call back to where Cell killed Android 16. That line comes across. Gohan gets red eyes like the original Super Saiyan um, transformation in the manga. It becomes Beast Gohan or Gohan Beast. The initial name for that was supposed to be uh, Saigyo Gohan, Final Gohan, but Toriyama said, this is Gohan Beast. It's like the beast has been unleashed. And he's able to take a punch from this massive being, which Cell Max went from being fairly large to even bigger. I don't know how that happened, but he took this massive punch like, that's all you got? You're done? All right. Literally what he says. He kicks him once, and Piccolo's not dead. He does his arm stretchy thing to hold him in place. And instead of Gohan doing a Kamehameha wave, which he did earlier to Gamma 2, he does a special beam cannon. Very, very much a callback to Goku and Piccolo versus Raditz. But Piccolo didn't die. He didn't get hit. Hit just took off the head of uh, Cell Max so easily. Best parts. Entirely the best parts. The comedy was on point. The jokes about how... Um, Boma uses the Dragon Ball, which is so dumb. She asked for her butt to be perkier, like when she was in her 20s. She asked for her eyelashes to be longer. And Piccolo is very much judging, like, you're using the wishes for this. Funny enough, everyone, even even Dende, is like, ah, Boma's not really using it any better, but, you know, she keeps, they keep the Dragon Balls now because since Frieza and his crew took them in the, in the Broly movie, they want to always have an eye on them. So she always will have someone searching for them and getting them. Which they could have used that wish to bring back Goku and Vegeta because they cannot be contacted. Because Whis has fallen in love with Chi-Lai. They are eating ice cream. He's being uncharacteristically nice. While they're while everyone is watching Goku and Vegeta have this sparring match. Where we said they cannot transform 
or use beam attacks. Just straight fists and flying. Which, really good. It went on a little bit longer than it should have, but it was really good. Uh, even Broly. Broly had his eyes on it. Yes, they're training Broly there. I have a theory. Here, Here's the spoilers for chapter 87. Since Frieza Black is a thing. <clears throat> Since Frieza Black is a thing. I have a feeling that this movie takes place either. I want to say it happens right after the entire Granola arc. And, you know, even at the. I read that chapter at the end of it. He, Goku says he's even stronger than Broly. Because he's now the strongest warrior in the universe. Because he beat the guy that is the strongest warrior in the universe. Via Wish. So he's training Broly to get control of his emotions, which he's still having issues with. And they're both training so they can get better than Frieza. So yes. <clears throat> that That is my theory there. So that is why the boys are not in this movie. You know what? I know I've spent a lot of time just explaining stuff that's happened. I am happy that there's no Goku and Vegeta in this movie. You know why? Because we depend on them entirely too much. From the moment that Toriyama started to make Vegeta a character that he liked, whenever Goku got a form, here comes Vegeta. And as, as a matter of fact, several times throughout Super, Vegeta has been stronger than Goku. And yes, we have Goku save the day, even though technically he didn't save the day when it came to Zamasu. Eh, he kind of did, but that was Zeno. He indirectly helped. He didn't save the day when it came to fighting uh, Jiren by himself. He had helped by Frieza. With Frieza and Android 17. I can't think of anything else in there where he saved the day. Goku was very much, instead of giving Vegeta more wins, they just gave Goku more losses. But yes. Yes. Uh, and at the end of this, at the end credit scene, Goku and Vegeta, they're still fighting. And it's a long fight. Whis, not Whis, uh, we, uh, Whis, yeah, Whis and Beerus both fell asleep. But both... Broly and uh, Limo, who is now Beerus's new chef, are both crying because these two guys are so tired they can barely punch. And Vegeta just happened to get that one punch in, not even hard, and Goku said, yeah, you got me. And Vegeta's happy he beat Kakarot. A lot of people are going crazy over this. Look, guys, I don't consider this an actual real fight. And I'm not even a, I'm not even a Goku fan. I'm just saying I would rather see them both go to their max levels, beams and everything, so this way they can actually show who's actually the strongest. Because Vegeta was doing some training that now his body's move, moving differently. He's retooling how he usually fights. He's already ahead of Goku. Although it was supposed to be a three way battle, but no one trusts Broly because if Broly transforms. Beerus's plan is probably going to be destroyed. So, um, special beam cannon. First, I thought there was no command mail waves. There were command mail waves. It's just, it's nice that we get Gohan in his Piccolo outfit, in his, this, in this outfit, literally, in this outfit again, doing special beam cannon and swinning that way. <clears throat> Uh, Pan learns how to fly at the end because she needed to because if she didn't fly, they would have got caught up in the blast. Um, let's see. I already spoke about the references here. Gohan is very much Superman. Uh, the guy, he won't fight until he has to. And when, you know, when he does and if his people are in trouble, that's when he snaps out of it, right? Um... I like that, and Piccolo asked Gohan, where did he learn how to do the special beam cannon? Gohan has actually be, been training in secret. He was not lying at the end of the tournament power. It's just, the dude has a day job. He has to pay bills. But at the same time, he still finds time to learn how to do special beam cannon. I like it. Uh, dang, I actually hit a lot of this while I was talking. By the way, we got another, we, more callback jokes, right? Piccolo only has two Senzu beans, because that's all Korin has. He does give Gohan his Senzu bean later, but when he threw Gohan the first one, he drops it just like he dropped the earring in the Boo Saga. Gohan effectively actually needs glasses when he is not a Super Saiyan 
or in his higher forms. And he even openly says to Piccolo, he says in front of everybody, I need my glasses, I can't see. And Piccolo's wondering, wait, when you turn Super Saiyan, does that actually fix your eyesight? Doesn't answer him, but I'm going to say that the answer is yes. Uh, already spoke about that. The sale thing. Security training. Uh, Bulma's dumb wishes. Oh, wow. I'm actually very surprised. I hit everything. Yeah, all right. I don't know if I mentioned Gamma 2 dies. He does a move that's very akin to Vegeta's final explosion. Gathers up all his energy and crashes down. It only broke the arm. It didn't hit the mark, unfortunately. And this causes Dr. Hito to, you know, Dr. Hito says, look, I knew they were bad. I just, I'm sorry. Can I work for Capsule Corp? And Boma finds out about his skin thing. He says, I won't make something as extreme as what I did, but I can make something that'll help. And we do get some funny background interactions between Gamma 1 pulling Krillin and 18 pulling Krillin. 18 was like, you guys don't deserve a job. Look at all the crap you call. It's it's very, very good interactions. But I love the thing, I love the fact that Magenta had to lie to him. And because he thought he was the hero, he built into Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 a sensor that can tell the evil intent which in the pe within the people they're fighting. And they couldn't sense any evil intent within Gohan or Piccolo. And they instantly turned Rear Ribbon Army. Because Carmine, and his his whole joke was the Carmine show, very much a shout out to how the Toei movies and everything go. He starts shooting at a little girl. He starts shooting at a three year old, which Gamma Gamma Two is like uh uh, shoots his gun away and Pan Pan knocks out two grown men in this movie. Um, what is another joke? Oh, I just had the joke here. Uh. Dang, I just forgot the joke about Carmine, the television. Oh well, it's it's lost. I'm so I'm I'm sorry. I forgot what joke that was. The growth spurt. So as you've seen the promotional the promotional footage, Goten and Trunk finally look like what they look like at the end of Dragon Ball Z. And even Piccolo goes, I haven't seen you guys in a while. Whoa, when did they get tall? And Gohan says, Well, you know, as Saiyans, we stay small for a very long time, and then we have a growth spurt. We have a growth spurt. So they answered a lot of stuff. How did Gohan learn special beam cannon? I train. Are we going to address the fact that he doesn't train a lot? Why is Piccolo picking up his kid? Piccolo is technically Kami and Demon King Piccolo. Oh, look, growth spurt. I like how they. And it's very, it's, I wouldn't say it's seamless, but it's great. Because they probably said, hey, nerds are going to talk about this. So show a thing, say a thing, explain it, and move on. And I loved it. I loved every part of it. I can't think of any other part that I want to talk about. I will say that one person, again, that person from the theater, said, well, uh... 18 is supposed to have trauma about Cell. Remember she had trauma in the Tournament of Power when some guy was going to eat her? We don't know how far long ago Tournament of Power was. I'm going to say maybe over a year or so. She could get over it, but at the same time, she was very, very shocked and dismayed when another Cell appeared. It's just, you got to do what you got to do. The world is going to be destroyed. You got to fight. And that's it. So, with all of this, how do I feel about this movie? <sighs> it is easily in my top five of Dragon Ball movies. Easily top five. Now, I have openly, openly have a Gohan bias. And I cannot see a reason to go below a 4.5. This is a damn good movie. This movie gives Piccolo, one of the most disrespected characters, one of the most loved characters. I can't find one person that says bad things about Piccolo. As a matter of fact, Piccolo is the Storm of Dragon Ball. If a person doesn't like Storm from the X-Men, they have issues. If a person doesn't like Piccolo from Dragon Ball, you got some issues. He gets two power-ups in one movie. Mwah, mwah, love it. And they're visible power-ups. 
skin skin goes from green to a little bit yellow then he becomes big orange strong brute man um gohan finally shows that he is the strongest and i love the way the transformation looks the hair it's a bit odd because it's super elongated it looks like he's in super saiyan 2 but it's it's grayish white he has red eyes he even smirked when he took the punch he's he has tapped into that beast bestial form of himself but instead of you know instead of the stuff that happened with super Blue and cell you're like nah i'm just gonna kill you bro great movie in my opinion five out of five I hope the next Dragon Ball Super Drag the Super Dragon Ball Super movie, you all better do one for Krillin, Tien, and yes, I'm gonna say Yamcha. We got folks getting power ups now. Goku and Vegeta can't be here forever. They gonna do their own thing, and eventually they'll probably end up becoming the new angel and god of destruction for Universe Seven. So, Tien, Krillin. And Yamcha, which is funny because we even get when Magenta was talking about them being the bad guys, we get we get Yamcha. No, I don't think that was Yamcha. Oh no, that might have been Goten. Ooh, yeah, my bad. But give the give those three one. Eventually, let Gohan and New Goten get one as well. They messed up the fusion dance. They need to train again. I just I can't wait. Their movie will probably have something with Pan too, where Pan is Super Saiyan. I, I like these the the Dragon Ball Super line of movies, so good. This gets five out of five from me. No Goku and Vegeta callbacks all around. If you're a Gohan fan, you're happy. Our boy is back in form. Mm. Now I know this video has run very long. 36 minutes and 50 seconds and which is funny because this is my 300th and 65th video now i have a video for every day of a normal year so i gotta say i'm happy that this is the video that is my 365th i am just i want to buy this movie on blu-ray so bad and it comes out september 20th for blu-ray so I'm definitely getting it day one. Guys, if you've seen the movie, please shout me out in the comments. I want to know what you thought of it. What was some of the transgressions people had? And you know what? I listened to the guy's transgressions. And okay, I see where you're coming from. Even though I have answers for those. I respect your opinion. I had a nice little debate with uh, uh online buddy Frank about Vegeta. Whether Vegeta... <laughs> Vegeta... Uh, getting plot armor, which was very fun. I enjoy those type of conversations, those kind of debates. I really do. <sighs> Just wow! I need more. I need more Dragon Ball shirts. If you guys see one with Gohan on it, my social medias are in the description. Hit me up with a link. As always, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers, and you know what? We we will get over. 1000 I had to I had to do the joke I'm sorry but do not forget hit the uh, notification bell to be notified of more videos just like this one trust me we got more coming I got more stuff on the pipeline don't forget to hit that share button as always everyone I thank you so much for taking some time out to speak well not to speak with me but to hear me speak and to spend some time with me please please be good be blessed wash your hands wear a mask be safe out there it's, it's getting crazy. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. Either way it goes. Don't be a jerk. And always remember that you are never alone. When people tell you heroes don't exist, that's not true. Hero is not someone that can fly, someone that can run fast or has super strength. Hero is a person that does the right thing when it needs to be done. And with that, I will most definitely see you guys next time.